Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be trying something a little bit different, and that is we're going to be going over a homework style question where we have a question in front of us that you might see on a test or a worksheet for economics, and we're going to go over solving it step by step so that you guys can replicate this when trying to solve homework of your own. With that said, let's get right into it. So here we have a PPF curve. And as you can see, good one, the good on the Y axis is guitars. And the good X or good two is on the X axis, and that's pianos. So I have this trade off, and anywhere along the PPF curve, I can be producing either guitars, pianos, or a combination of both at the same time. As I produce more and more pianos, I give up more and more guitars. As I produce more and more guitars, I give up more and more pianos. And so the trade off is bowed outwards. For example, point A, I can produce 800 guitars, but zero pianos. Whereas at point E, I can produce 550 pianos, but no guitars. So on and so forth for points B, C, and D. But how do you use these points to calculate the opportunity costs? That's what we're going to be looking at today. So starting off, we're going to be looking at the opportunity cost of going from point A to point B. So point A, is up here at 800 guitars and zero pianos. And point B is right here at 650 guitars and 275 pianos. So I'm going from point A to point B. And so I need to look at the change in guitars as well as the change in pianos. And what you'll notice is that you're actually giving up guitars and you're receiving more pianos as you move from point A to point B. But what does that got to do with opportunity costs? Well, Opportunity cost, as a reminder, is simply what you give up in order to obtain one more unit of the other good. So in this case, I'm giving up guitars to receive pianos, and I want to know how many guitars I give up to receive one more piano. And the math is simple. To get 275 pianos, I must give up how many guitars? I must give up 150 guitars. Okay, and that's easy to see as I'm simply going from here to here for pianos. I'm simply going from here to here for guitars. However, I'm not interested in the cost of 275 pianos in terms of guitars, but rather one piano. How do I calculate that? Well, I simply divide both sides by 275. And with that said, I now have an equation that looks like this. What's 275 over 275? Well, that's simply one. So to get one piano, I have to give up one hundred and fifty over two hundred and seventy five is approximately zero point five five guitars. And so therefore I would say that the opportunity cost of one piano is equal to 0 0.55 guitars. Now you might be saying, well, how do I know if it's in terms of guitars or in terms of pianos? How do I know which one is which? Well, opportunity cost is just that it's a cost. So it will always be in terms of what you give up. So here the opportunity cost is guitars, because as you can see, I'm actually giving up guitars as I go from point A to point B. So here, I have approximately 0 0.55 guitars. Now, what about from point B to point C? Well, from B to C, I'm simply going from this point here to this point here, which means I'm going from 650 to 500, and I'm going from 275 to 400. So again, I'm actually giving up guitars and I'm receiving pianos. Uh, so I'm going to just do the same style solution. So to get 125 pianos, I give up 150 guitars. So as you can see, I'm simply going 150 guitars. So as you can see, I'm going from 275 to 400 and I'm going from 650 to 500. And so that's 125 difference here, and that's 150 difference here. 
However, I'm not interested in what the opportunity cost for 125 pianos is. I'm interested in the opportunity cost of one piano. So I will divide both sides by 125 and that will give me the proper ratio. So now I have an equation to get 125 over 125 is simply one. To get one piano, I give up 150 over 125, which is simply 1.2 guitars. Therefore, the opportunity cost is equal to 1.2. Now I want to look at point C to point D, and you should be catching on to the method that we're using to calculate this. So let's erase what we have here and get started on C to D. So to go from C to D, we're simply going from this point here to this point here, in which case we're interested in this right here, which is a difference of 150. And we're interested in this right here, which is a difference of 100. So again, I'm going this direction and therefore giving up guitars and gaining pianos. So to get 100 pianos, I give up 150 guitars. But again, I'm not interested in the cost of 100 pianos. I'm interested in the cost of one piano. So I'm going to divide both sides by 100, which is going to make this one. Now I have to get one piano, I give up 150 over 100, so 1 1.5 guitars. Therefore, the opportunity cost is equal to 1.5. 1 1.5, that's pretty sloppy. Let's try that again. 1.5 guitars. And lastly, we have point D to point C, and that's actually backwards from the one we just did. So let's take a look at what's going on there. So now we're going from this point here to this point here, we're going this direction, and so now we're actually giving up pianos and we're gaining guitars. And the values are the same. I'm actually gaining 150 guitars and I'm giving up 100 pianos. However, the way I solve is very, very similar. So in this case, to get 150 guitars, I must give up, I must give up 100 pianos. I'm not interested in 150 guitars, I'm interested in one guitar. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 150 so that now on this side I have to get one guitar, I must give up 0 0.67 pianos, approximately. So now, therefore, my opportunity cost is equal to zero point is equal to approximately, I should say, zero point six seven pianos. So now you'll notice that all of the opportunity costs are in terms of guitars, except the last one, and that's because all of the other problems we were actually going uh, down the PPF curve and for the last one we are going up the PPF curve. So for all the original ones from point A to point B and from point B to point C and from C to D, we were going this direction. And therefore we were giving up guitars and we were gaining pianos. However, for D to C we were going this direction, in which case we were giving up pianos and gaining guitars. Again, opportunity cost will always be in terms of what you are giving up. So in the first three instances, we were giving up guitars. And in the last example, we were giving up pianos. That's why this last one is in terms of pianos. Now, there's actually a very simple shortcut for these last two problems. So you'll notice that I had us do a problem from point C to point D and point D to point C. So essentially the same two points 
but opposite of one another. And there's a really simple way to calculate opportunity costs in these scenarios that will really save you time on a test. And that is, they're simply reciprocals or inverses of one another. So we determined that the opportunity cost from C to D was simply 150 over 100 guitars, right? And that was just the difference in what we gave up versus what we got. That's how we got this one. But instead of actually doing all the solving to get D to C, all we have to do is actually flip this so we can see it's reciprocal. And so this 0.67 pianos is actually just 100 over 150 pianos. So we didn't actually need to calculate it, but if we did, it would be the exact same method that we've done for all of these. To calculate opportunity cost, you essentially take what you give up over what you get. And the answer will always be in terms of what you give up. Now, in this scenario, you'll actually notice there's a couple of points that don't really make a lot of sense. Namely, namely point F, point G, and point H. They're not actually on the PPF. Well, point F is unattainable. You can't actually consume at point F as it requires resources that you don't have. That's why it's outside of the PPF. What about points H and G? Well, these are points that are called inefficient. These are points that you, that you could produce or consume at, but you would choose to produce or consume more. That is, you could produce 500 guitars and 275 pianos, but you could also produce any amount in here to get closer to being on the PPF. So this would be a dead weight loss in the middle, and you wouldn't want to ever produce inside, that, inside the PPF curve. So again, any point inside the PPF curve is known as inefficient. Any point outside of the PPF curve is known as unattainable. Well, that's it. Now we've gone over this style of homework question, and we're hoping that you find this useful. If you want to see more videos of this nature, then please submit some homework questions that you'd like us to review or some topics that you'd like us to cover some homework questions of. And if this is something that you guys find interesting, then you can definitely look forward to seeing more videos like this in the future. As usual, if you like this video and are excited to see more, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and comment what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.